Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today, we're playing The Stanley Parable. It's a game that I believe was started off as just a mod for uh, Gary's Mod. I think it's for Gary's Mod, I wasn't sure perfectly, but um, I've heard of it before. Don't know very much about it, all I know is it's it's a unique, <laughs> an unique game. Unique's the, 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 probably the best word to describe it as. And and quite enjoyable of what I've heard because it's got what 92 out of 100 on Steam, which is quite a really good, really good rating. So uh, yeah, I want to play the game. And uh, well, without further ado, I think we should probably start. Um, let's go then. The end is never the end. Hmm. This is very strange. Very strange. I thought. I don't know if what this game's going to be like at all, honestly. I have no idea what I'm going into. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders, orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them. Yeah, that looks like a fun job. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one oh, showed up to give him good. instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, oh, I think he I'm got in control up to now. his desk and stepped out of his office. Well, I think it's just WSSD, I think. The controls are quite simple, really. Where are we going? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I swear the door just shut. Decided to go to the that, that, that the door just shut by itself. I wasn't concentrating on what he was saying there. Um. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. You know what I don't understand is why he's saying Stanley all the time. It's really weird. Very strange. Can I go in here? Go here. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> Shut up! I'm enjoying myself! I'd like to click everything. If it was Gary's one, I would have picked stuff up, wouldn't I? I'm thinking of Portal or something, I don't know. Right. It's on this computer, can we zoom in? No, I don't think there is any buttons for that. Um, 46. No, no one's here. Stanley clicked on literally every single thing <laughs> in the office because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. <laughs> oh god, this is going to be funny. I've just got a feeling now. Jesus. Oh my god. Oh, what's up there? Can we go in there? Oh, maybe not. What's that say? I hate Monday. Me too. Me too, right. Oh! Okay, I, I need to stop getting distracted. Stanley came to a set of two open the door just shut by itself again. That's left. weird. I got on the one. He said left, didn't he? He did say left. He didn't say right. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. 
What is hot? Profits, profits. <laughs> well, very good plan there. Should we try and read this small print? Probably something interesting. Probably not, actually. Oh, broom closet. That's cool. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Maybe I can pick something up. Maybe something can help me. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Oh, crap, why is the door shut? That was weird. This game's creeping me out. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom <laughs> closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> oh my god, this narrator's awesome. I'm gonna find his name later. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? <laughs> Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> um... Oh, I, I can't jump! This space bar doesn't work. Oh, I you guess... You realise there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> Can I please just... D oh, really? Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favourite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. Okay, okay, let's get on track then. Is he gonna praise me? Maybe not. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Let me see what downstairs first. I wanna see what's downstairs. What's in here? No, nothing. Oh. Oh, it's flashy light. Pretty colours. <gasps> but Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. Oh. He might be fired for that. Yeah, and in consider such a competitive that. economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, Maybe I am crazy. <laughs> All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Yeah, why? why? doors close automatically behind I him did point that one out, you know. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this. Can I see what's in this car? Lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh sh then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. Oh what the hell? Appeared, it was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. That's really weird. <laughs> I'm about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. 
And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? That was weird. How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Right. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Oh. He felt the oh. cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the right. fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I it's want not. my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Let's not. I am okay. Left click, left click, right click. Maybe not. Stanley began screaming. Please. Oh, jeez. That's not Stanley. funny. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must oh my real. God. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Oh my God, this is creeping me out. And what? Everything went black. What the fuck? <laughs> Shit. That's not. That made me jump this is out my story skin. Of a woman named Mariella. What? This isn't, this is a Stanley parable. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? He died! Stanley's dead!